I'm Tony Ant News. I wanted to go back over the power situation after Storm Dara. Well, we've had a few major problems with the solar panels on the Isle of Anglesey. They got completely obliterated, two years old. The whole of field has been shattered. Um, all the panels are, sc are scattered absolutely everywhere. Um, huge clean up job and uh, they're just going to have to reinstall, you know, go through the wreckage and see what they can reinstall, what they can have to replace. Uh, one of the wind turbines lost its propeller. Um, to, uh, wind blade, blades, you know, they just, the whole, the whole triangle of blades just fell on the ground. Um, I would have loved to have seen that. Um, <laughs> my kid sister had a very, very rough time of it in uh, a Welsh village. Um, so I think it was very early Saturday morning, they lost power. Um, they was gonna be all back on later that day, so they just sat it out. Um, anyway, later in the day, it got, they, they got message through saying power was restored, but it wasn't. They got enough power to run the router and an LED TV. Um, the lights wouldn't come on, the, the heating wouldn't come on, the fridges wouldn't come on. So um, anyway, the uh, power companies kept lying about the fact that they were back on. Then they admitted there was one house off. Then they said there was 30 houses off. And then they said there was 900 houses off. Um, then the deadline actually got stretched back out to nine to three, got stretched out to um, 6 p.m. Sunday. And then they, just as you got near to 6 p.m. Sunday, they stretched it out to 3 p.m. on Monday. By that point, the mobile phone mast had gone. Um, the, local, the local council had opened the village, the uh, recreation centre, the trouble is that they didn't, none of the new one in the village got the message because they hadn't got any communications. So, um, you know, in the end, somebody came and rescued my sister and literally took her to walk to her house to warm up. Um, when you've been cold that long, it goes through to the core. Um, so, you know, it didn't fare very well. Um, the power network, from what I understand, they had a connection to the network, but there was no power on the network. It was just like minimal voltage. Um, and then it died completely. So we need, we need more energy security. And I, long time ago, I learned that you need two sources of power in your house. Um, you know, she's got oil boiler and she's got electric and the boiler doesn't work without the electric. And they don't even get water without the electric. The village goes off, no water. Um, but she had a camper van outside, <laughs> small camper van, uh, but that got hit by a flying tile. So the one of the windows got blown out as well. So you couldn't even go in there to get warmed up. You know, they could literally go and cook in satin broken glass. Um, anyway, um, so going back, I learned a long, long time ago that you need two sources of power. Um, I always have now a house with a backup system, you know, even if that's being able to turn the gas rings on on the cooker, that that's some warmth in the house and you can cook yourself a hot meal and drinks, etc. Um, but I've actually now got a power supply that will fire up the boiler. I've got a generator. If it gets really bad, I've got a generator which I can chuck onto the fridges. But you can't trust the network anymore. Um, you know, it's uh, it's going down fast. And the overhead network they want to put in to boost power around the country, A, we can't afford it, but B, it is more susceptible to storms. Um, the, the beauty with coal and sorry, the beauty with gas and with nuclear is that they just produce a nice steady power. Your nuclear is a dead good steady line of power and 
oil and gas can provide peak power when you need the demand, meet, need to meet the demand. Um, wind power, it only blow when the wind blows. We've got no, we've got no battery storage to really hold that up. The hydrogen storage is just, they've just done the first hydrogen pipeline. The first baby steps towards a hydrogen backup um, plan where you store hydrogen gas under the, in the rocks, in old oil wells, etc., oil and gas wells. But uh, yeah, it'll be a, quite a while before that gets up to speed. Um, I don't, you know, a carbon capture is is a complete waste of money, but you know, there, there are better ways to do it. With, you know, with the same amount of money, you can get a better result. Anyway, I'm Tony Ant News, my little review of the effects of Storm Dara and where we need, oh, one more, one more thing. I, I really think we are going the wrong way having houses which are all electric. You know, if you've got an all electric house, go and get yourself a camping stove. Um, and obviously you've got to crack a window open when you're using a little camping stove in your kitchen. But, you know, you can, you, we, we should not be having houses with just electric. It's, it's, we, you know, you won't have the leisure centre to go to because they won't have any power either. Anyway, I'm Tony, Ant News, signing out. Like, subscribe, all those things. Bye for now.